We have some more fast solar wind coming and an Earth-directed solar storm. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week continues to be a bit on the stormy side. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we have a coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth's strike zone over the past couple days. It's been sending us some fast solar wind, and along with a stealthy solar storm, all of that managed to bump us up to G2 levels for a short bit back on the 27th. Now we're beginning to calm down from that fast solar wind, and we have yet another set of coronal holes. This set is the same set that gave us a G2 level storm back in early September, and it looks like it's poised to do it again. We actually had a uh, solar storm launch back on the 28th from region 3110, and this, this solar storm looks like it's mainly going to the east of of Earth, but uh, NOAA models show that the solar storm might actually clip us. So right around the first, about midday on the first, we're expecting this, uh, this solar storm to kind of clip us along with that fast solar wind. So once again, we may be up to G2 levels with storming. Not quite sure it's going to be that intense, but we definitely will find out shortly. Now also, as we take a look at the far-sided sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see that big coronal hole sitting around mid-disc. Mid along with region 3110, and that should get you kind of anchored a little bit. But look to the east limb in stereo's view. You see a lot of brightening in the north. This is from old regions uh, 3094 and, and 3098. These are regions that were were flare players back uh, about a month ago, and it looks like they've survived their, their far-sighted passage. So we definitely will be expecting the uh, solar flux to stay boosted, and we're going to expect that radio blackouts will still be on the mend. You. Now switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as we watch the solar storms being launched, you can see that first one, the one in the front, that's the larger of the two. Even though it looks like it's coming up mainly to the east of Earth, as you watch it come out, you can tell we're going to actually get clipped by this solar storm right around the 1st, probably midday to mid-afternoon mid on the 1st. And this is actually going to happen right about when that fast solar wind from those coronal holes is going to uh, start hitting Earth as well. So, Aurora photographers, this is good news for you. It definitely means we could be getting some decent Aurora show, possibly down into mid-latitudes. But amateur radio operators and emergency responders, this is not good news for you because we're dealing with Hurricane Ian. So all of you that are dealing with the hurricane watch nets, please understand that you're going to deal with radio blackouts potentially on Earth's day side, but then Right around October 1st, when this storm hits, you're going to be also dealing with radio propagation issues on Earth's night side as well. So please take these uh, these matters into consideration when you're planning your communications for all that first responding you're doing, as well as realizing that GPS might have some issues during the solar storm. Switching to our moon, we're now coming out of the new moon phase on our way to our first quarter, and by the third, the moon will be about 50% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, now's a good chance, but you might want to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we have been anticipating the fast solar wind from that set of coronal holes that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and from that solar storm launch that looks like it's supposed to be hitting right around October 1st. Well, guess what? It looks like it's already beginning to hit. We are seeing disturbances in the solar wind now. It's even bumped us up to active conditions. We've settled down a little bit, but it looks like there's a lot more to come. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is giving us about a 75% chance of major storm conditions. We are definitely expecting major storm levels at high latitudes, and that could last easily over the second and possibly even the third before we begin to see things calm down. At mid-latitudes, we're expecting minor storm conditions, but we do have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm, even down at mid-latitudes. And again, the storming is expected easily through the third and possibly throughout the fifth before things totally calm down. So 
war photographers, even at mid-latitudes, expect to keep your batteries charged because you're going to need it. This looks like we're going to have a great chance for some decent aurora show over the, the possibly this next week, and it's going to be almost as good, if not better, than the storm we had back on September 5th. So this is a really great time to get out there and take a look. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a few active regions in Earth view that are actively flaring, and this includes new region 3112 that is just beginning to rotate into Earth view now. It has fired off a couple M class flares, and these flares have actually been smaller than what they might have been if the whole region had rotated into view. So we might see more of these M-class flares and they might be larger than what we've seen thus far. We'll just have to wait the next few days to see and get a better look at it. Meanwhile, NOAA's giving us about a 30% chance of M-class flares over the next few days and about a 5% chance of X-class flares. And these risks may rise, once again, as we get a better look at region 3112. Meanwhile, solar flux is hovering in about the, in, still in triple digits, hovering about about the 140s right now. Likely that's going to continue to stay about the same. So amateur radio operators, yes, you know, you're going to be dealing with these radio blackouts uh, throughout this week, but at least the solar flux keeps you in the good range for radio propagation on Earth's day side, as long as you can kind of handle the noise. And yes, of course, GPS users, we don't necessarily like that solar flux being that high, which it causes a, some issues for you down at low latitudes. And also these radio blackouts cause issues for you near dawn and dusk, so you're just going to have to hang in there and hopefully things will quiet down, but likely for at least the rest of this week, we do have those radio blackouts on the menu. So the space weather this week is really beginning to pick up. We have those coronal holes that are rotating into the Earth strike zone and sending us some fast solar wind, along with that glancing blow from that solar storm that's kind of grazing by Earth off to the east. And these things together, as a matter of fact, we're beginning to see those effects right now. We've got some disturbance in the solar wind as we speak. It's already bumped us up to active conditions, and it looks like the show is just beginning to get started. So aurora photographers, even down at mid-latitude, you have a great chance for aurora, so keep your batteries charged and get ready, because you could be, we could be storming possibly for the next five days or so. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I know you're dealing with Hurricane Ian, and I know this is a problem for you, but as this fast wind begins to ramp up, just realize you will have issues on Earth's night side, and of course, dealing with radio blackouts on Earth's day side is not going to help very much. The nice thing is that you do, you can, if you are at night, you could uh, benefit from a rural propagation, because that's going to be active easily over the next five nights. And now also, you uh, GPS users, just understand, especially if you're first responders when it regards to Hurricane Ian, again, GPS could be an issue in terms of getting reception uh, anywhere near Aurora or even just sporadically near dawn and near dusk. So be aware of that and be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often. I'm Tamitha Scope, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.